at this stage. Uh, we're a little bit early, but we are going to move into uh, member statements. And the first member statement goes to the member for Beaches East York. One of the great delights of being the member for Beaches East York has been the privilege of getting to know many members of the Bengali Canadian community. In East Toronto, the community's core is nestled on and around the Danforth and in Crescent Town. March is, of course, Bangladeshi Heritage Month, and March 26 is Bangladesh Independence Day, which marks the day that Bangladesh separated from Pakistan at enormous cost in lives to preserve its Bangla language and culture. The dedication of Bengali community groups to the well-being of community members and ensuring kids are growing up proud of their language and culture is unmatched. I want especially to shout out the South Asian Women's Rights Organization for consistently shining a light on the harsh conditions of working immigrant women and for providing the policy answers that need to be enacted. Last summer, we unveiled the first International Mother Language Day monument in Dentonia Park, and this year, the community gathered there in February for the first time to honour those who lost their lives fighting for their language. Every year, this powerful ceremony, and indeed the existence of Bangladesh as an independent nation, serves to remind all of Canada of the importance of mother languages to root and ground us all. Ontario and Canada need to follow the Bengali example and to ensure that First Nations people can reclaim the languages stolen from them in residential schools. We have so much to learn from this beautiful community. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next member statement, the member from Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes and Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to recognize an annual and very sweet community event taking place next weekend, April 2nd and 3rd, in my riding of Halliburton Court, the Lakes Brock, the Sunderland Maple Syrup Festival. After two long years, the annual festival is back, and this year we are celebrating its 25th anniversary. Maple Syrup Festivals will be taking place all across the province over the next few weeks where community members can gather together to enjoy this season's maple syrup harvest and learn about the time-honoured tradition of making maple syrup. Maple syrup has a long history in Ontario and it continues to be an important staple in our rural and global economy. Canada remains the world's largest producer of maple syrup and I want to give a shout out and thank some of our local producers in Halliburton, Kortha Lakes, Brock, like Har Lane Maple Products and Pinedale Maples in Sunderland for allowing community members to visit their farms every year to learn about such an important Canadian tradition. So come learn about traditional maple syrup production, beginning with early knowledge sharing from Indigenous communities to today's production methods, support local vendors, and take part in lots of family-friendly activities next weekend in Sunderland. Congratulations on 25 years of this sweet tradition in Sunderland, and thank you to the fantastic local volunteers who make it possible. Thank you. The member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to speak today about the Port Coburn Top Hat Ceremony. My riding of Niagara Centre runs the length of the Welland Canal from Lake Ontario to Lake Erie through St. Catharines, Thorold, Welland, and Port Coburn. An important tradition takes place in Port Coburn every year in March, celebrating the annual opening of the Welland Canal and this year the kickoff of the 64th navigation season of the St. Lawrence Seaway takes place on March 24th. Every year, a top hat is presented to the captain of the first downbound vessel and Port Coburn's Fair Trade Committee, made up of dedicated volunteers, are on hand at Lock 8 Gateway Park with coffee and hot chocolate for the many residents and dignitaries in attendance. Port Coburn has a rich history in the marine industry and does a great job promoting that fact through Canal Days festivities and the Port Coburn Historical Marine Museum. We are also very proud of the Port Coburn Marine Auxiliary Rescue and its dedicated volunteers, formed in 1988 to preserve life and property in the waters surrounding Port Coburn. Niagara drivers are well acquainted with bridge delays and know that we will spend time waiting for ships to pass in the coming weeks and months, but we're also aware of the economic benefits and jobs that the Welland Canal generates for the entire Niagara region. It's estimated that 3,300 ships pass through the canal annually. Today, over 40 million tons of cargo is carried through the canal by vessels each year. As a matter of fact, general cargo shipments surged by 71% last year. 
The top hat ceremony gives us an opportunity to recognize the importance of the Welland Canal and how much it enriches the economy, history, and culture of our great region and province. Thank you, Speaker. Further member statements, the member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And today I rise in the legislature to pay honor and tribute to the life of Alma James Vernon Red Leader, formerly of Wyerton, who passed away on March 6th at the age of 92 years. Alma survived by his wife Shirley, his companion of 69 years, son Steve and Donna, Bert and Susan, and was predeceased by daughter Maureen. Mr. Speaker, Red Leader was a pillar of our community. He served for 70 years in the Wyerton Rotary Club, Mr. Speaker, and was, a, was an absolute fixture at the corn booth at the Wyerton Rotary Village Fair. He was twice awarded the Rotary Club's Paul Harris Fellowship and recognized as Rotarian of the Year in 2017. He was committed to the club's mandate to help spread and, and help and hope spread, particularly the Easter Seals concerts which were hosted at the local arena. He was part of the community choir, Mr. Speaker. He was on the recreation committee and did much for the youth of our community. He was a teacher, Mr. Speaker. At the age of 18, he began teaching in Amabel Township and went on to work as a teacher and principal in Shell Lake, Wyerton, Ajax, and Amabel Hepworth over a distinguished 39 years, Mr. Speaker. Red, or Al as we knew him reverently in Wyerton, was a person who, along with his wife Shirley, gave significantly to our community in many, many capacities. He, he, he and his wife Shirley helped to save the Wyerton train station, Mr. Speaker, and he was always around to be able to help out youth in need. He was very firm and committed to what he did, but Mr. Speaker, he was a compassionate, friendly giant, and he truly will be missed as part of our leadership in the Wyerton, Bruce Peninsula area. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Kiwetnam. Uh, miigwech, uh, Speaker. Uh, Today is World Water Day. As Anishinaabe people, we know that the Creator has given our people a special relationship and responsibility to the water. Water is one of the most basic elements we need to survive and live a good life. And it's a basic human right. Ontario is the province with the highest amount of drinking boil Drink, drinking water advisories. In Kiwetna, today, there are 13 long-term drinking water advisories and five short-term advisories. This is 60% of the 31 First Nations in the Kiwetna riding. We had elders who told us decades ago that we would come, there would come a time where we would pay as much for water as we do with other resources. We are living in that time today. The water that sustain us, sustains all of us is under threat due to climate change, water diversion systems, and man-made pollution. The health of our water system has an effect on our relationship to water. We must be able to trust our community uh, water sources and those out on the land. Speaker, uh, today, on this day and every day, I hope you take the time to honour our collective responsibility to protect the water and the environment uh, for our children and our future generations. Miigwech. Miigwech. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker. It is an honour for me to rise in this House to acknowledge the progress that has been made on an area in this province that is of great concern to my riding of Scarborough Guildwood. In June of 2021, I stood and brought forward Motion 10, condemning Islamophobia, because the terror attack that took place in London demanded an immediate and unequivocal response. In the aftermath of this tragic loss, I joined my Liberal colleagues in working with all parties to address the issue of hate-motivated incidents in this province. From those collective efforts, came our London Family Act, Bill 86, put forward by the NDP. 
Bill 86 is now at Justice Committee. Getting this bill passed quickly must be a genuine commitment from members of this House following consultations with stakeholders and the development of a framework for combating hate. It is critical that we work together to get Bill 86 passed as soon as possible. I want to recognize the leadership of CEO Farooq of the National Council of Canadian Muslims, as well as Abdul Hai Patel, Nadeem Sheikh, and Maz Abouat from the Scarborough Muslim Association, and of course, uh, MP Mike Schreiner of the Green Party, who joined me in recent um, discussions about the bill. There was agreement from everyone who attended, including the res relatives of the Afsal family. If this government is committed to passing this bill, they must take action quickly. Speaker, this weekend, sadly, we all know that hate-based attacks are happening in this province. Worshippers at Dar Allah Taweed Islamic Centre in Mississauga were attacked in a hate-motivated incident. A clear reminder that the work that we need to do is ongoing. All parties agree Bill 86 must be passed, and it must be passed now. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Flamborough Glanbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning. Speaker, since our government first took office, we have been committed to tackling the skilled worker shortage. In the horse industry alone, there are over 1,000 unfilled jobs tending to horses on farms, racetracks, and training facilities. Grooms and caretakers are fundamental to the health and welfare of the animals, and they are critical to the success of the industry. The horse racing and breeding sector contributes $2.3 billion each year to Ontario's economy. And for more than a decade now, I've been working with Jim Whalen, president of the Ontario Harness Horse Association, to find a solution to the worker shortage program. I am so pleased that weeks ago, our Minister of Labour, Training and Skills Development came to my riding of Flamborough Glanbrook to announce that our government is investing $2.1 million to train workers for rewarding careers in the horse industry. 250 participants are being offered free training, up to $3,000 to cover expenses and paid work placements. Hannah Knowles from Mount Hope is a young person who was looking for a new career path. She had been enrolled in a special effects program in a career college, but she really loves horses. And when this opportunity came up, she jumped at it. I am so proud that our government is supporting the project. It is giving people a head start in a career that they want to pursue, and it is ensuring employers in the horse industry that they will have the trained workers they need. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, today I ask the government reject the plans Metrolinx has put forward to build a train maintenance facility and layover in the Don Valley Park. I support and my community supports the expansion of the GO train service in the Lakeshore Corridor East and in the rest of the system. We need this. My community understands, I understand, the need for increased GO services to get people out of their cars and onto mass transit. People support and want electrification of these goal lines to cut pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. However, they don't want a rail maintenance and layover facility in the park area of the Don Valley. No one would propose such a facility in High Park, and no one should propose such a facility in this location. The Don Valley Park is a major recreational area for a community that is becoming increasingly denser on both sides of the Don. These are areas already facing parks deficits. We can't get new parkland in the centre of Toronto, and we can't afford to lose what we have. The minister should sit down with Metrolinx, review what is needed, and find a new location that works from an environmental and engineering standpoint. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a very special year in Taiwan. It's a year filled with celebrations of George Leslie Mackay. He was the first Canadian missionary to Taiwan who arrived here 150 years ago on March the 9th, 1872, and is still a beloved hero. George Leslie Mackay was born in my riding of Oxford. Incidentally, that was 178 years ago yesterday. 
The people of Taiwan are showing their regard for Mackay through this year with various celebrations and messages to the Canadian Mackay, Mackay Committee from Taiwan President Tsai Ling Win. I'd like to read part of the President's message to you today. As we commemorate the 150th anniversary of Reverend Mackay 1872 arrival in Tamsui, we look back on this remarkable life as a missionary, educator, and medical practitioner in Taiwan. Among the most notable of his achievements was the founding of Oxford College, where Reverend Mackay himself lectured intense, extensively on subjects including Bible studies and medicine. It, it has his devotion to public health that left possibly the deepest mark on Taiwan, as his name is now synonymous with the medical profession here. Several of Taiwan's hospitals bear his name, ensuring that his legacy will continue for many years to come. Reverend Mackay represented Canada admirably through his time in Taiwan, sparking a close relationship between our two countries that endures to this day. Today, Taiwan and Canada are like-minded like democracies working together toward a common global vision of peace, stability, and prosperity." End of quote. And so says the President, so say we all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our members' statements for today.